A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. You have followed my teaching, way of life, purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, persecutions that I endured. Yet from all these things the Lord delivered me. In fact, all who want to live religiously in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and charlatans will go from bad to worse, deceivers and deceived. But you remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and from that infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to, for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. Though my persecutors and my foes are many, I turn not away from your decrees. O Lord, Great peace have they who love your law. Permanence is your word's chief trait. Each of your just ordinances is foreverlasting. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. Those who love your law have great peace, and for them there is no stumbling block. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. I wait for your salvation, O Lord, and your commands I fulfill. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. I keep your precepts and your decrees, for all my ways are before you. O Lord, Great peace have they who love your law. As Jesus was teaching in the temple area, he said, how do the scribes claim that the Christ is the son of David? And Jesus himself inspired, David himself inspired by the Holy Spirit said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I place your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he, how is he his son? The great crowd heard this with delight. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're celebrating the feast of 
the memorial of St. Boniface, the Anglo-Saxon missionary bishop who basically evangelized the Germanic tribes. I think I'd rather go into a room of snakes and spiders than try to evangelize the Germanic tribes. They were fierce warriors, had a many great cultural things, but you didn't want to mess with them, and you didn't want to mess with their gods. Boniface knew where he was going and what he was doing, led by the Holy Spirit, which gave him enormous passion and courage. And eventually, as signified by the color of the vestment today, martyrdom, the crown of martyrdom. So today, we pray through the intercession of St. Boniface. Today's gospel is beautiful. Um, the, the translation here is a little clunky. Is that technical enough, clunky? How do, do the scribes claim <clears throat> that Christ, he's really saying, what's the position? How do they interpret this, the scribes, that the Messiah is the son of David? That's kind of a widespread thought amongst scribes, Pharisees in particular, and others of the six or seven Jewish movements of Palestine in, in the day. It's better, you better get a, the sense of the question that Jesus is raising is, what is the scribal take on the anointed descendant of David, who is his son, the anointed descendant? That's how the scribes were hearing it, and that's how all the people, their expectation. And because it's David who was anointed, the son, descendant, is going to be anointed, and the broad expectation was it was to really um, get the Romans out, the oppressive taxes and all that. So there's also an expectation that the, uh, the Messiah would be a teacher who would be truly righteous, like in some of those Psalms. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? The man with the clean hands and pure heart. So there was a combo of this kind of military anointed leader and this anointed teacher, and it splits in different religious communities, Jewish of the first century. So Jesus comes on the scene, and like a good rabbi, he interprets this from the scriptures. He says, here's what David said, inspired in the Holy Spirit. By is also a correct translation, but in the Holy Spirit's better. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I place your enemies under his feet. He says, how come David calls his son my Lord? If he's the heir apparent, the son of a king, he's not Lord until the king's dead. Then he's the Lord. There is no other Lord, right? So now a living king is calling his descendant way down there, the Lord. So this is another way in Jewish thinking, let's call it, to show that this son of David is like also the son of God. He's kurios, Lord. That's the word used in the Old Testament for God the Father. It's the saying, I am a guy me. It's the same thing, I am God. So the crowds were delighted. You know why? It wasn't because pizza and beer were free after the little talk. It's because in Jewish debate, in scribal debate, you, you line up all, it's like a court. You line up all the opinions of the venerable rabbis that went before you, and then you give the counter arguments. If you've ever read Thomas Aquinas' uh, Summa Theologia, you see this. It's, it's a really good rational process for ferreting out through just reason something that could be true. Jesus cuts through the grease, the cerebral cobwebs, and they get it immediately. What a brilliant teacher. They get it. They see, yes, Jesus is the anointed one, Messiah. Jesus is the son of God, the son of David. 
and he is the Son of God. Immediately like that, brilliant teacher. And the crowds heard this with delight. That's what I want to lead us to, want to leave us as we go to, leave us with this thought as we go towards the Eucharist. Um, why would they delight? He didn't say a good joke. He didn't do much. He revealed something true that pierced the heart. That was what they're experiencing. And the way you talk about that in narrative that will be read centuries later, centuries later, is you show their response to Jesus. And that's the response. They heard this with delight. I want that grace. <laughs> I want to be able to read scripture every minute and be delighted. I want to be like that crowd, like, you know, the, the sheep. Dumb, fat, and happy, but delighting in God. And if God wants me to be a sheep that's slaughtered like Boniface, he'll give me the courage not to run away. He'll give me what I need. But what he gives me is delight. Can we take that delight now to the Eucharist? Can we ask the Lord to give us some sense of movement towards him with delight as we receive him, body, blood, soul, and divinity? I'd say let's give that a whirl, see where that'll take us today. Not just at the Eucharist, but the rest of our day and into the weekend until we can get the Eucharist again. May Jesus Christ be praised.